Everyone, um, would anyone mind please closing the doors so the, the sound from outside will not disturb us? Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. So, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to share this with you. Welcome. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Adam Nasser. And today, in this hour, I have the great honor of showing you a system that I developed myself. We have tested it with a scientist in Austria. It was featured on national TV as well. And it will teach you how to get an unlimited memory. Before I can tell you how this works, um, let's talk about memory itself. How do you think it works when we recall stuff? Why do we recall it? Why are sensations? Yes, perfect. Why are sensations? Why is that? Sensations belong to the subconscious mind. Everything we remember for a longer time is stored there. Everything we forget quickly, although we don't really forget stuff, of course, but if we don't recall it for a longer time or just brush over it, it was only in the conscious mind for a short cue. So if we want something to be in there, we want to get it straight into the subconscious mind. Do we agree all on that? Yeah. Yeah. So what I've found in my long career of learning, especially as an autistic person that has here and there a little benefit, here and there a little problem with it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I found that the school system, I don't know about the States, but in Austria and Germany, it's frontal teaching, it's hammering it down until you finally got it. Mm -hmm. And this, in my opinion, is a fight against the conscious mind until it finally breaks down and allows the information to get to the subconscious mind. This is troublesome. Why the hell would I want that? Why would I want to fight against myself until I remember something? And so, I tried mnemonics. Other memory techniques. There is the major system where you can read um, numbers and different symbols and memorize them more easily. I will teach you one of those systems this class, which you can use to remember lists, to remember names, to remember about anything you want, and basically an unlimited list. Um, but this wasn't enough for me because if you have a mnemonic list, one day it's full, right? You use it, you connect it. Oh, before I ramble on, who of you has experience in memory work? One, two, three, four, okay, welcome. Okay, so for those of you who don't have any kind of experience, don't worry, you will still understand what this is all about. So, mnemonics are there to make it easier for you to remember. They follow a very basic principle, which I will explain later, but in short, they make things that are new more known to you so you can remember it more easily. Um, who of you does remember their best friend's phone number? One, two, three, four. Five? Yes. Who of you does remember their first kiss? A lot more hands. Who of you? Things that it's more likely to remember the number of the person you first kissed, depending on how much it was back then, yes? Or the number of a random stranger? Of course, because you already know that person. You already have experience with them. And this is what makes it more easy. So, now I found this mnemonic and made it easier for me to remember stuff, but I, I hit a brick wall. And the brick wall was, what if my mnemonic list is full? You connect something, for example, let's say I have uh, number one is a stick, number two is a swan, number three is uh, a heart, number four is, let's say, a desk, whatever I connected. Uh, I connect things I want to remember and it doesn't work anymore because I have used it once. So I looked into memory palaces. Who of you has seen BBC Sherlock? One, two, three, okay. So, some of you might know the memory palace. Who of you does not know the memory palace? Okay. It's a wonderful technique. It's developed by the old Romans. Basically, 
to conjure up a place in your mind that you know very well and that you know inside out and then you place the items you want to remember onto the routes that you always go or the items that are always on the same place. As you can see, things you already know are connected to things you don't know yet. The problem here is the second, the same problem as with the first method. One day your room is full. One day your house has its limits, right? So if I, let's say I want to remember a chemistry class, I put it into my toilet. I want to remember an interesting recipe, I put it into my kitchen. I want to remember uh, all the things that happened between Brad uh, Pitt and Angelina Jolie. I put it into my closet, wherever it belongs. And one day my house is full and it's done, I need a new house. For those of you who don't have enough money to have a new house for everything they want to remember, that's troublesome, isn't it? So, one day I thought, why not imagine a palace? Why not just create something I can put in your rooms, I don't have to worry about it. And I had another problem. I forgot the rooms. <laughs> Pretty interesting, right? Try to make something to remember it, then you forget it. So, let me ask you a question. Who, in your mind, is the best instance to ask for our memories? The best what? The best instance to getting your memories. Who is responsible for your remembering something? The unconscious. Exactly. So, ask yourself this. If you want to remember something, really remember it. Why would you try to remember it with your conscious mind instead of just going directly to the subconscious mind for doing it? And so I created the white room system. Who of you have seen Matrix? The Matrix? The movie? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. For those who don't know it, it's about uh, people living in a computer world. They are all just plugged in and the matrix is basically <coughs> just a program that can change as you need it. So now I remember a lot about the stuff around it. Basically, the white room system is a memory palace that is constructed by a subconscious mind to fit the things you want to remember. So I want you to compare the following in your mind. Let's say I will tell you about a hypnotic process, okay? Let's say we will talk about a problem resolve process. Put them in a problem, activate the resources, bypass the critical factor, transform them and whatnot. Let's say this is a 15 step process to remember. You can either try to drill it in, yes? Or you can use a memory palace like every other no mo normal memory palace. You put it in, you go in your room, you go from your front door, you go to the children's room, you go to the toilet. Does that really connect? Does it? There's a complicated process to help a person change their life's fit into the room and the way you go through your house. Of course not. And this is why it doesn't really work. But what now if your subconscious mind would conjure up anything that would perfectly fit? So in a room that was created by your subconscious mind for the information that you want to remember, everything inside that room will remind you of the thing you want to remember. There's nothing else that you can get confused about. Does it make sense yeah. until now? Anyone having trouble understanding it and now? Please raise your hand if you do. Wonderful. So basically, that system works by connecting things and allowing your subconscious mind to connect it for you. Less work, less fighting with the, uh, with the conscious mind, more efficiency. This is how I like to work. I don't see the critical factor as an enemy that has to be melted away or bypassed. I think it's an instance to be recruited to help us. And so, let me teach you a method that allows you to connect things more easily. Because having a memory palace is wonderful, but without a few mnemonics, it will be very hard to keep track and to structure it. So you want to satisfy both instances of your mind. 
You want to satisfy the conscious mind by having a clear-cut process that you can always rely on, feel that it's good for you, and you want the subconscious mind satisfied by having the ability to put in emotions and connections and pictures. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So, the first system is called the linking system. And it consists of six memory laws that make it extremely easy to memorize stuff. The first law is the second most important one. It's called substitution. So, let's imagine we have a few objects here. Uh, do you mind giving me a few objects that you own so we can, we can practice it? Wonderful. Thank you. Flyer. We have a pen here. Oh, awesome. We have a ring. Thank you very much. We have a pen. Wonderful. Yeah, this should be enough. Can anyone, everyone see the objects here? No? Okay. Then let me make it easier for you. I will just hold them up. So we want to remember a list now. Be it a grocery list or the exact order of a process to remember. What you want to do is have a process that is always the same. Because your conscious mind will always doubt new information before it lets it in, correct? So you want it to feel safe. Okay, I use the same process every time. I feel safe every time. Check it out. Next step coming in. And the process is as following. The first item will be used in the function of the second one. You substitute it. So make it easier to understand. Ask yourself the following. What would you use a pen for? Exactly. What do you use a flyer for? To promote. Yes. So, if the pen is the first item I want to remember, and the flyer is the second item I want to remember, what would I do? Wonderful that you say that. Thank you. The answer is wrong, but I'm very happy that you said it. If you want to keep order, don't make them appear in the same picture. You want to substitute them. So in that case, I would remove the flyer and imagine a pen in the function of a flyer, like giving out the pens for promotion. Make it even crazier. Let's connect the flyer and the ring. What do you use a marriage band for? Symbol relationship. It's a symbol for relationships. When do you use it? Marriage. With a marriage. Of course. This is very easy. This question is entirely dumb that I'm asking you because everyone knows it, right? It's absolutely unquestionable. <coughs> so I have something that the conscious mind cannot question. Do you see why this is important? I know that flyers are there for promotion. I don't use them to wipe my ass. Sorry for the language. Do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> so, if I would substitute them now, how would I do it? Let's say the fly is number one, the marriage band is number two. What would I do right now? Would you, when you're, you imagine getting married and using the flyers there? Yes! Thank you! Exactly like that. Yes, um, he said, in that case, if I substitute it, I would use the flyer in the work of a marriage band and imagine myself being at the altar, saying, yes, I want to, and then putting the flyer on my finger instead of the ring. So you really use the first item in the, in the function of the second one. Is this clear for everyone? Wonderful. So, this is very important that you always do it like this. Because so you can get used to the process, always have the same process going on, and it will be easy for you to connect stuff. Yes? Do I always substitute the first item to the second or second to the first? Does it matter? Uh, yes, it does matter actually. Um, because if you do it the other way around, you are going backwards. And this will block you because, let's imagine I want to connect these three items. So let's say I have the ring, number three, number two is the flyer, number one is the pen. So, if I would connect them, what would I do? Pen to flyer is connected. How does it look like? The pen is the flyer. Exactly, I'm giving that up. Correct. Flyer to the ring, connected. How does it look like? The flyer is the flyer. Exactly. 
But if I would do it backwards, I would use the second one to write as the first. But you will see it's a little bit more complicated this way. If you try to wrap your head around it backwards, it will confuse you. Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason why. And now, imagine it going the other way around. Pen, flyer, flyer, ring. More easy, right? Because the conscious mind wants to progress forward. And we want to satisfy it so it supports us. We don't want to bypass it or kill it. We want us to support what we do. Cool? So, by having this system, this alone will enable you to memorize any list you want. Give it a symbol that you unmistakably connect with it. And then, connect it to the second. Very important for you again, we don't want both items in the same picture because it will confuse us. We will substitute forward and we don't substitute more than two at a time. Why do you think that is? Confusion of order. Yes, exactly. Very, very good. Because we would confuse it. If we connect three items, we don't know what the, what the exit order was anymore. And this makes it so much more easy for you. Because if you only worry about the next one, you don't have to recall the whole list anymore. So you remember the, all of the list, but you only think of the next one, and it just comes to you like that. And for this, I want to give you an example. OK? I will give you a list now. I want you, all of you to close your eyes, please. Because I know how complicated this is at first. To, to I know how dry it is. So I wanted to make it more easy for you. OK? Everyone close your eyes right now. And I will give you symbols. And I want you to really focus on them. The first one is a butterfly. And I want you to imagine now what you picture a butterfly to be. Does it sit on a flower? Or is it flapping in the air? Maybe it rests on your head or your finger. Maybe you collected it. The second item is a chair. So now let yourself come up without thinking too hard. What the chair is for? Are you sitting on it? Is it stapled? How does it look like? And now substitute. Use the butterfly as a chair. You can make it bigger if you want, but you are sitting on a butterfly. Instead of a chair, there's no chair anymore. It's only the butterfly. The next item is a ring. A marriage band. So see yourself either wearing it or see yourself using it, giving it to someone, someone wearing it, whatever. And substitute the chair is used as this ring. People having a giant, big chair on their hands. And you're allowed to laugh if this is funny for you. <laughs> a big chair. Yes, I want to. The big chair on the, on the finger. The next item is a dancer. So now, you have the rank from before. And you have to dance. Now you can see maybe like America's dancing or something. You have a show like that. You see a lot of big rings dancing around there. Having the judging. And, yeah, I like your form, but you're, you're not fluidly in Melbourne, and whatever. Next item is glasses. So now you can see Someone, instead of having glasses on your face or someone else, you see dancers on, in front of the eyes, hanging there, dancing. And as you progress doing this, I want you to feel very comfortable. If you feel strained right now in doing this, relax 
more. Allow yourself to calm down. Because it should be easy for you. If you want to, recall the list in your mind now. Did you remember? And raise your hand if you feel comfortable memorizing it right now. Feel comfortable with the list? Wonderful. So let's make a little break here. Come back here. Let's talk about it. I want a little bit of feedback of you. How do you feel doing it this way? How does it feel for you? Questions, stuff I don't want to blow your part of information without giving, getting feedback from you. Go ahead. Yes, please. I'm curious now. You took the, the butterfly to the chair. So yes. now I've got the butterfly as a chair. Yes. And you wanted the butterfly, or you wanted the ring, so we brought the, the, the chair to the, was that still a butterfly chair? Or was it just a chair? Wonderful question. Uh, as soon as it's not connected to the fourth, oh yeah, sorry. Um, the question was, um, if you connect the items, if they keep the properties they had before. No, they don't. So only in the pair they are coupled with. So in that case, the butterfly was the chair, but now if you connect the chair to the ring, it will be a normal chair with the normal properties of a chair. So this is something the conscious mind cannot question that much anymore. Yes? You have messed up my image. I because didn't you have given didn't. me some examples. <laughs> Sorry. And you said uh, now instead of rings, everybody has chairs around their fingers. Yeah. And then it, I, my subconscious <laughs> mind was going crazy. Oh, interesting. What because happened? Because I had a different picture. Yes. And by giving me your picture, all my uh, chain was messed up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that yeah, happened. Yeah, but uh, it was fascinating because uh, I really uh, was excited about to to yeah. see what happened inside. Wonderful. And, uh, what did happen then? Tell me. Actually, yeah, actually, my subconscious mind has created some images I was comfortable with, and you created for me an image my subconscious mind was not comfortable with. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, he said by giving the examples for the group, especially for the people. Who don't have it that easy, his conscious mind wasn't comfortable with it and I wanted that to happen. Because this means that you already are experiencing that your subconscious mind has its own way of doing this. And this is how it should be. Because your subconscious mind has its own way of thinking. And the way it does it, it's good as it is. I don't want to change you. I don't want to force you to do it in a way that you are not comfortable with. I want you to feel safe, sound, and easy with it. Does it answer your question? Wonderful. You had a question. Uh, so, because the items were so different, I'm thinking that's easier. I'm thinking of substituting carrots for cucumbers, cucumbers for mushrooms, mushrooms for tomatoes, tomatoes for the things that are all within the same category yes. and how that might not be as easy. You are very right. I chose very different symbols so it is easy for you to experience it first because I don't want to overload you with advanced stuff, of course. You're very right. If you have things that are very similar, you will be able to use the other laws I'm about to talk about okay. because they will make it way easier for you. Thank you for this question. It's a great one. And should I repeat the question or? No, I think you will. Okay, cool. So, uh, I saw other hands raising up. Where? Am I losing that? Okay, yes, please. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what question? Uh, you mean the last one? Um, about I raised my hand up for? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't memorize that. <laughs> well, you are in the right place to help you with that. <laughs> you had a question. Um, when you were um, connecting or making the butterfly the chair and imagine someone sitting in it, <coughs> What if it, the, in your mind you're thinking, well, the person thinking, uh, sitting in the butterfly is your connection instead of... <laughs> Very good. In that case, I really highly recommend... Uh, the question was, what if um, when you, let's say, in the connection of the butterfly to the chair, what if you think of a person sitting in it and connect the person sitting in a chair with it? This is why it is so important to use the right symbol for the things you want to connect. 
because if it is the sitting in the chair, it doesn't matter who it is, you can imagine a faceless person, which I recommend. Um, it's way easier this way. So use a symbol that you cannot question. So if you think about it, if I say chair, everyone has a picture of a chair in mind, right? So use the first thing that comes to your mind because this is the most comfortable for you. So let's recall the list. I'm counting from one to three. Everyone saying what the first item was. One, two, three. Butterfly. Splendid. One, two, three, second one. Chair. Exactly. Number three was one, two, three. Rain. Great. Number four, one, two, three. Answer. Yes. Number five. Eyeglasses. Exactly. Number six. Whoever was it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> just testing you. You're, just, just, you're continuing up something. Maybe something comes up. <laughs> Very great. So this system, this linking system itself, allows you to connect things together. In my opinion, it's the most crucial thing to learn before you can go into the memory palace itself. Because you need to be able to connect stuff to stuff. Good. The other laws allow you to make it easier. Change the proportions. Make it bigger or smaller. Make the amount more or less. If I remember sand, I don't remember the Sahara, I remember one grain of sand because this is very unusual. If I want to remember, let's say, something that would be in very singular manner. If I want to remember a computer, I don't remember one, I remember millions of them. Because it's so different. So example, mushrooms don't come alone, right? So if you would connect a mushroom to a carrot, you would say, it's probably see for me, um, a bunny nagging on a billion of mushrooms. I know bunnies always love carrots. It's my picture. So if I remove the carrot, put in a million mushrooms, I know, okay, I connected the carrot to the mushroom. Because for me, nagging a bunny is not reminding me of the bunny, but reminding me of the carrot. Complicated now? A little bit? No? Cool. <laughs> I'm used to having this very complicated this way, so I'm very happy that all of you have such open mind. Thank you for that. So is that, the, is that one of the, you said there were six things, is yes. that another one change in the proportion? Yes. So basically, one law is substitution. One law is giving symbolism, very strong, unmistakable, unmistakable symbolism. One law is changing the proportion in size. One law is changing the proportion in mass and the amount that it comes. Wait, what? So basically, uh, if something is appearing only in once at a time, like a computer, you don't buy tens of one, uh, you would make it more. If something is there in a lot of mass, like thousands of sand grains, I just use one. Isn't that changing the proportion? Um, or no, proportion and size? Uh, yeah, I mean, the si I mean, once the size, for example, uh, making a small pen bigger or making um, a ring bigger as a dancer, right? Um, this would be changing the size, or the proportions would be, for example, let's say, um, imagining a thousand different uh, flyers from the image from before, a thousand different flyers around my finger. Changing the amounts. Yeah, that's what I meant. Thank you. Thank you. English was my first language, please forgive me. <laughs> Thank you. Changing proportions and amounts? Yes. And very yeah. important yeah. is also of course, don't use two symbols in the same picture because you want to substitute, right? You don't want them to be in the same thing. So, uh, last thing is consistency of symbols. If you have a list and you give one of the items in the list a special symbol, it, you want it to stay the same. Why do you think it is? Yes, exactly. So let's imagine uh, cheese. What can you use cheese for? Tacos. Tacos. What else? Fondues, fruit salads. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. So imagine now having a list where cheese comes in three times in a row. If you use it a different time, in a different symbol every time, you might think, ah, oh, it was Switzerland, right? Oh, damn it, it was cheese. <laughs> and believe me, that happened to me, so I know why this is so important. Okay, these are the laws of memory. You can apply that to everything. 
For example, if you want to remember a name, who of you has troubles remembering a name? Wonderful. Who is interested in learning how to remember a name? Wonderful! Okay, so, as you know now, connection to something, correct? So, uh, my name is Adam Nassor. It's a complicated name, right? Nassor, not very common here. So, the first thing you do, find something that is familiar. What does the sound of Nassor remind you of? Nassau. Nassau. Nassau, yes. What does it mean for you? Spaceships. Spaceships, yes, NASA, right. So, what is your symbol for NASA and spaceships? What is my symbol? Yes, if you, if you hear of spaceships and NASA, what is the picture comes to your mind? A rocket. A rocket, okay. Now you know, rocket, NASA, it's me. And now, notice the most memorable thing about me. That is for you memorable. Okay. Cool. And now connected to the rocket. Okay. What's substitution? So, just out of curiosity, what was uh, the thing that you noticed about me that comes to your mind first? Uh, receding hairline. The receding hairline, exactly. And now, instead of the receding hairline, see rockets on my face. A lot of rockets going back. Now you know I'm at a NASA. NASA. Make sense? Okay, so, another thing. <coughs> In Germany, my, so my name sounds like wet ear. Nass means wet and or means ear. So it's easy to remember because I'm a wet ear. As well, right, for the Germans. But you had your symbol. You will never forget my name now. I'm the guy with the receding rocket hairline. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Can you make an example now for the first name? Could I touch it as well? Yes, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is easy to remember. Everyone knows the story. Or, if you don't know it, what is the first thing that sounds very similar to Adam? Airtime. Adam. Airtime. Yes, or Adam. Yeah, airtime. Some kind of guy being in the studio, having a receding airline. Would work. Make sense for everyone? Very important for this to work, though, is careful observation. If someone tells you their name, Make sure you take the time to let images come up, because if you don't, it's gone. Your subconscious mind will not accept it because your conscious mind blocks it. I don't know that. I don't care. So care. I said it yesterday. Yes? Did you want to finish your... No, come on. <laughs> I'm just thinking of if, if I'm working with students who are having trouble in school the same principle could be taught to them to memorize concepts. Yes. And uh, the question was if you could use this system to teach children uh, different concepts to memorize. And yes, this is possible. For this, for extra concepts, you have to find a symbol for them, or let them find a symbol, which is way better, um, that represents the concept for them. And this is something that we'll, I will talk about now, because you all came here because you heard, hey, that guy teaches how to get an unlimited memory. I want that, right? And now it's time for you to learn it. Close your eyes. Relax. And now, please imagine a completely void, wide room. No ceilings. No walls, only complete, beautiful, comfortable, non-blinding whiteness. Something that is just beautifully free, allowing you to shake it in any way you want. This is your starting point of the white room technique. You will always start here you will always end here. And here is the place of your creativity. As I speak, allow it to change and form, fitting what I'm about to tell you. Before you want to memorize something, 
get a very casual, clear image. For example, if I want to remember something about the history of the USA, the biggest topic would be history. So let it change to something that reminds you of what you want to have. In that case, it's about getting unlimited memory, memory technique. Allow your white room to change now. If it changed already, feel free to use what came. If it was on history, let it clear, let come new images up for memory techniques. And don't be afraid to accept what comes. It might even be something that doesn't make sense to you yet. That's okay. Let it come up. Everyone who has a symbol, please raise their hands. Splendid. Next thing you want to do is chunk it down. It's not just any memory technique. It's a memory palace. So now allow the image you already have to adapt and to change so it fits the new description as well. Everyone who has a symbol, please raise your hands. We chunk it down once more. It's the white room technique. Because you start in the white room and it changes for your needs. So allow yourself to incorporate this as well. And if you found yourself in a space, feel free to come up and we talk about what just happened. Excellent. Yeah, enjoy that. Everyone come on back. Let's talk about this. What did you feel? How did you experience it? How was it for you? Tell me. Yes? Actually, for me it's fascinating because I have my own uh, therapy technique called Soul Reports. Yes. And I'm working in a similar way. Really? <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, because I think, you know, Carl Gustav Jung uh, yes. had the same idea of the collective mind. Interesting. And symbols, and I think it's quite, uh, quite similar to this, yeah. Very interesting. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, read about Corpus of He was a genius. Yes. Could it be? Was it, was it the guy who was a pupil of Freud for a time? Yes. Oh, then I know him. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, everyone who had a symbol. Yes, please. I got lost because I, you know, I, I, the word chunking, you said chunk it down when you... Yes. I couldn't quite figure out what that meant. Oh, thank you. So I, I just, after that, I didn't know what to do. Oh, I see. Yeah. The question was, what does chucking down mean? Um, does anyone else uh, have the question what that means? <laughs> yes? Okay, um, basically, if you remember stuff, the problem is that it is too detailed, way too detailed to remember everything. So you want to start at a place where it's very easy to remember. It's easy to remember the word memory technique, right? You learn a memory technique, that's easy. Now you need something to specify it more. What kind of memory technique? A memory palace. So it is like a subcategory. By chunking down, you create subcategories. Can someone tell me uh, uh, some kind of topic that is very complicated, they want to learn, where I can assist now in helping to chunk it down? Something there? Informatics. Informatics. So the big topic would be informatics, right? What kind of thing do you want to learn in informatics? Networks. Networks. So this is the next part. What do you need for networks? Virtual 
workstations. <coughs> workstations. Next thing. <coughs> computers. Yes, and then we come to the computer skills. So is clear enough for you what I mean? Yeah. One. For you as well? Yeah? yeah? Okay. 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 So please feel, I know this is a very complicated topic and I would love to make it more fresh, but it's a lot of theory. So how do you feel about it now? Do you get a grasp of what it is? Yes. So everyone tell me what you think about the technique right now. What do you think of it to be? What do you think about it? How do you feel? Excited. Excited? Thank you. Why? When you break it down like that, it's kind of brilliant. Thank you. I'm happy to hear this. Thank you. Yes? Hello, thank you. I think it's all about now learning and uh, take mental experience. Yes. Because what I, what, uh, I'm a little bit stuck now because... I, it's a lot of info. Uh, yeah, but I see also it takes some time to create <laughs> the stuff. Because if I have to read your name five times, <laughs> and I need 10 minutes to find my pictures. So it's all about um, practice. practice. Yeah. So I agree. When I was, yeah, it's a lot of practice that you have to put in at first, but only to learn the system itself. In the beginning, I was taking hours to figure it out. Now I can read a book once and know everything that's inside, even by the page if I want to. I have actually one person here that learned it first. Kevin here. Would you mind telling me a little bit about the experience, how it worked, how we did it? Okay. Um, I really enjoyed the Lincoln part. Um, I, I really enjoyed the Lincoln part, so I actually used that with my kids as well. Cool. So um, how I motivated them was I told them I'd give them a dollar for each word, that they, for each item they remembered. Um, my son, he caught on real fast. Um, once I told him the idea of it, he took off with it. To this day, we still remember the same wow. list of what we started out with, which was a list that I got from you, which was on work. Um, then a, a white room technique. I've been using that for the energy stuff that I was learning with cool. David Snyder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the energy technique, I still remember that now. But I use a lot of weird things like sexual references and crazy stuff in order to cause me to remember it. Perfect. You know, Wonderful. Thank you for this. That's exactly the thing uh, I'm talking about. Having the symbols that make it stick for you, having the symbols that make it powerful, putting it in the white room and there. Yes? The uh, memory palace, the thing that you're trying to remember, is it the thing at the bottom of the list or at the, <coughs> the top? Very good question. The question was, the thing you want to remember, is it the thing at the top or the bottom? Actually, this chunking process only helps you create a palace. So for example, let's say you want to learn something. Let's say the technique of David. Um, you chunk it down beforehand, then you go to the white room, remember the chunking, let it create a room fitting for it, then you can put in the symbols for the things you want to remember. It will be very easy this way, because your subconscious mind gives you everything you need. So the moment you feel it straining for you, please take a little time to relax. And I'm offering this for every single one of you. As we speak, I have recordings of the white room technique as I explain it in English. If you want to know more, if you need it, please give me your card or meet me later in the vendor room. Give me your email address. I will be emailing you the link for free. So I want you to really be able to incorporate this for you. Also, feel always free to mail me, to write me, Ask me questions as you use it, because I will give this to you gladly. Cool? Very. Awesome. Also, I want to give you two exercises now that will allow you to make the white room even more powerful. The first exercise, uh, uh, both of them I got from Igor Dalkovsky, which is a great teacher. Um, the first one is called Connecting Objects, and this is a very fun game. So. You take two random objects, whatever you want. Let's take a pen and a ring, okay? And you find reasons why they are the same. You remember this exercise, right, Kevin? Cool. So, what do they have in common? Why are they the same? They're round. Both of them are round. Correct. What else? Both of them have holes. 
Both of them have holes. Wonderful. Solid. They both are solid. Excellent. And by this, yes? You, you carry both of them with you or on you. I carry both of them on me. Wonderful. Oh, five minutes left. This was quick. Thank you very much. So, okay. This is the first exercise. Do it as often as you can because it will teach your subconscious mind to connect things quicker. The more you do this exercise, the more quickly your memory palace will come up. You will not need 10 minutes to remember a name, you will need 2 seconds and it will come up. And if you finish the process, you won't even have to conjure it up anymore. It will just be, you read something, well, oh. and if you recall it, it will be as easy as recalling your name because it's directing your subconscious mind. There's no need to fight your conscious mind anymore to accept it, it just goes in directly. Second exercise is called Strange New World. And the Strange New World technique works as this. You close your eyes and you start describing a world you don't know yet. Talk quicker than you can think. I know that sounds crazy now. And you was very, you were, I remember it again, you were like, oh, wow, how does what? <laughs> but in the end you got it down, didn't you? And it's, so is there a volunteer who wants to Try it for about 5 to 10 seconds to try the strange new world technique. Yes? Yes, but I'm supposed to keep track, so... Uh, okay, it will... 4 minutes. 4 minutes. It will only take 10 seconds, because in the beginning, I don't want you to take too much time for this, it will overwhelm you. Just use 10 seconds for this. So, what's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. So, Stephanie, close your eyes for a second. And as soon as I snap like this, um, I want you to describe a world that you don't know yet, that you didn't think about right now, starting now. Purple sky. Purple sky, quicker, quicker, quicker. Uh, floating houses. Exactly. Purple sky, floating houses. Observe them. What comes to your mind? What can you see? Um, they have chimneys and thatched roofs. Yes, they have chimneys and thatched roofs. Very good. Quicker, quicker, come on. Green mountains. Yes. Yes, wonderful, and stop. Thank you very much. How was that? That was fun. <laughs> Great. As you see, it was strange to conjure up a world you don't know yet and something comes up. This is important because this way as a conscious mind will learn to create worlds you don't know yet for you. Together with the connection exercise, it learns to create worlds that connect to the things you want to remember. So let's recap shortly. How much time do we have left? You have three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Yes? Sorry, I know I want you to recap too, but um, this seems, these techniques seem to me to require a, a, a high level of creativity. And there are personalities out there that more are scientific and concrete. So how do you deal with the two types of... Very good question. Um, if I have people that have, but the question is, um, how do we deal with people that don't have that high imagination powers that are more scientific? Um, they will have a harder time at this. This is just how it is. You need imagination for this. But if they find symbolism that fits for them, like scientific processes, um, it will be easier. But I recommend this technique in an age from 12 to 55. Depending on imagination, children profit tremendously from it. So to recap, you learned the linking system. Substitution, everything, you know that? Going progressively forward giving symbols. You learned the white room system, how it works. Going to the white room itself, let, chunking down the information you want to the point that you can still remember it effortlessly. Let the room come up. Give the information symbols and let them find their place in the fitting white room. As a last thing, if you know mnemonics or lists that you remember, in the white room, you can use the same list over and over again because they are in different rooms. So you can use one mnemonic list that you really like for as much information as you want. And because the subconscious mind does it for you, you don't have to keep track of it. You remember the big topic, you remember the other topics, and the white room comes up, you get your information. Unfortunately, we only had an hour. I would have loved the demonstration the second hour. But if you want to, I'm here until Sunday, Meet me in the wider room, we can do live demonstrations. Write me your email, give me your card. You will all get the white room system um, that I uh, connect there and I record for free. Just, uh, it will take about a, a month or so until it's perfectly done. I want to have better quality. So, 
Thank you very much for spending this time with me. I know it was a little bit dry sometimes. I hope still you enjoyed it. And thank you very much.